Hi, I'm Renata Clanton Moy, the Chief Communications Officer of the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. Now, during this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, I wonder if you knew that in North Carolina, suicide is the third leading cause of death among young people ages 10 through 24, making it a serious public health issue. A lot of people don't realize that, but the Cumberland County School System does, and the district is doing what it can to shed light on youth suicide and what we can all do to crush that statistic on this edition of Get Connected. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. And then we're going to turn on the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. Finally won. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. Nothing. And then they die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make more. Appreciate you joining us for this edition of Get Connected. We're talking with the Executive Director of Cumberland County Schools Student Services, Ms. Natasha Scott, and Mr. Douglas Parrish from the Cape Fear Valley Behavioral Health Care Center. Now, we're discussing suicide prevention among teens and adolescents. Welcome, Natasha. Welcome, Doug. I'm glad you all are here with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to be here. Yep, yeah, glad to be here. Great. This is great. Um, and I know that suicide and just discussing suicide is very a very serious matter mm. and can be very uncomfortable. Yes. However, um, how prevalent is suicide among young people in North Carolina? It is the third leading cause of deaths among um, young people aged 10 to 24. Um, there are some stats from our North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. And according to those stats, 44.5% of the deaths of 10 to 24 year olds between the years of 2004 and 2012 were due to suicide. So that's a lot. That's over a thousand deaths due to suicide. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, with that in mind, Doug, with what you do there with our health system, mm -hmm. do you get to talk with a lot of the young people who come through who may have attempted or? or sure. We, we deal with a lot of young people who have had a lot of depression. In fact, in 2009 and 2011, the Healthy School Initiative did a survey of all students in North Carolina and found that over 25%, it was like 28% of all students in North Carolina have, have the diagnosis of major depression. That's, that's about four times more than what the adult population has. So it's a very prevalent kind of disorder. And of course, suicidality can be attached to that as well. And you know what, I, in thinking about even this particular show and this topic, some parents might say, well, I don't necessarily maybe want my child to, to watch this or to know about it because it may plant seeds. Right. What do you think about that? It's a myth. It's a common misperception. Um, a lot of people think that, that, it's, that if you mention that or you say something, someone's likely to do that. But it's like if I said to you, will you give me your monthly paycheck? Oh. Well, you would say no, <laughs> right. and, and you know, it doesn't make you tempted to do that. Well, in the same way, asking about suicide doesn't make someone tempted to do it if they're not thinking about it. So talking about it is actually a healthy thing. It, it actually will prevent it as opposed to creating it. Oh, that's good. That's good mm -hmm. to know because you just kind of, you kind of wonder, you know, right. as a parent, you right. do, you kind of wonder, well, if I talk about it, then am I planting seeds? Am I encouraging the child to do this? That's a very prevalent very prevalent thought that people have. People are afraid to talk about it for fear that somebody's going to want to do it or that they're going to put the idea in their head as a solution and that's not the case at all. 
or some people have fear of talking about it because if I ask you and then you say yes, then maybe I don't know what to do next. Right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, so like, there's also what, that fear of responsibility. Okay. So Doug made an excellent point. The talking about it, you actually may save someone's life. You, you, you might make the difference, and you don't have to be the person that saves someone, but you can absolutely be the person that recognizes the signs and symptoms and just simply knows when to go and get help, when to call someone like Doug, or if you're in the school district, when to call a school counselor, a school social worker, a school psychologist, someone who's had some formal training in talking with and working with someone who is experiencing suicide behavior or suicidal thoughts. So you might, it's a number of things that you can do. Be kind, talk to the person, use direct language. Don't be afraid to say, are you thinking about killing yourself? Ask them straight out, you know, be, be clear about it. Don't beat around the bush. Go ahead and talk to the person. And if they say yes, get them to the emergency department. You could get them to um, an outpatient therapy clinic, but it's just all about talking. It's, it's weird that something so serious and so devastating, the easiest thing to do is to just talk, just yeah, talk to just the person. Yeah, let them know that you care. Now, in dealing with a lot of our young people, what do you all find seem to be the reason why a lot of them are contemplating or even attempting suicide? The biggest risk factors amongst youth right now is, and, and typically what will happen is a young person will uh, attempt suicide or start planning or thinking about suicide within two weeks of some kind of crisis. Mm -hmm. The types of crises that you kind of have to be aware of are things like interpersonal relationships, mm -hmm. a, a friend, a breakup, uh, you know, if you've got a boyfriend, girlfriend, breakup kind of thing. Parents might be getting divorced, things of that nature. That can be a, a big problem. Bullying has become a big problem. Mm -hmm. right. Even social media, um, when, when kids are getting on social media and bullying mm -hmm. other kids, that creates problems. So there's been a lot of, of uh, issues around that area that you have to be aware of. Um, anytime there's a change, sometimes it can be small things like a move, like with our military kids, right. when they have to move, some kids ad adjust to that and adapt to that much better than some other kids. Mm -hmm. And some kids, that's a loss for them having to move like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, you're looking for a change. And typically what happens is, mm -hmm. is the most, the highest risk times are within two weeks of a crisis. Mm. But I would add, um, in addition to everything that he had, mm -hmm. your, some of our really high performing students, that crisis could be that I took the SAT and I didn't get right. a National Merit Scholarship. I didn't get into the college that I wanted to get into. Right. And there were all right. these expectations about how I was going to perform and what I was going to do. And so we have seen, so sometimes that trauma, some of the things that we think are so little or as the kids can say petty, mm -hmm. it can be the world to, to a young her, person. To, yeah. And so you have to just take it all mm -hmm. seriously mm -hmm. because we're just given general guidelines and that's what they are, guidelines. You know, we're, we're naming out very specific things, but someone watching may have someone in their family that it was a, a totally different issue that made them feel quite so hopeless. Mm -hmm. So just could be anything. Yeah. And, and to piggyback on Natasha, sometimes it can be very subtle. Sometimes it can be very subtle. It's not the dramatic, you know, life-shaking events or something like that. It can be very subtle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking for changes, and you're looking for changes in behavior, changes in, in sleep patterns. Attitudes. You're looking for changes in appetite. Uh, you're looking for changes in, in what is their normal routine, and are they breaking that? Mm -hmm. Their peer group may change. Um, doing a lot of talking and writing and thinking about death, um, increased alcohol and substance abuse, issues with sleeping, just like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, just again, they're all just guidelines. And I think what's so great about the tagline of it's okay to ask when you see a change, right. inquire about what is that change. Right. Because, and we're focusing today on teens and adolescents, but I would also say if you see it in your family member, if you see changes in your coworker, mm -hmm. ask them too. Mm -hmm. Ask them exactly. too. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, and I, that was my next question pretty much. Signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. So change. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of changes mm -hmm. from the, the norm. Decrease in grades. Mm -hmm. Lack of interest in things that um, were previously a kid that used to be really into the basketball team and now suddenly they don't care if they go to the game or not. Um, just, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. 
it's good to know. Now, let's say, and you did mention that a little earlier, if someone does come to you or you inquire and they say, well, I'm contemplating killing myself, committing suicide, mm -hmm. then you mentioned reaching out to um, you know, emergency services, mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. social worker, psychologists. Okay. And we've yes. created something here in Cumberland County that is, that is relatively unique uh, in North Carolina. We have, at Cape Fear Valley, we have a walk-in clinic, a walk-in mental health clinic. Uh, and you don't have to have an appointment. We are open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we're open from 8 to 5 Saturdays and Sundays. Anyone can bring a child or an adult. It doesn't matter. Anyone can just walk in. Uh, it's located at 1724 Roxy Avenue. And you can just come in and we'll get someone assessed and, and get them the treatment that they need. They don't have to go to the emergency room and wait many, many hours. Sometimes a wait in the emergency room can be many hours. Right. You know, 17 hours sometimes or more. Uh, so, but if you walk in here, usually you're seen within 30 minutes to an hour. Now, you know what, if you could do this for us, Doug, it's there on Roxy Avenue, but mm -hmm. I know there's a lot, there are parking lots and a lot of different things mm -hmm. in that area. Kind of tell us exactly where that facility is. If you, if you were going down um, Village. Village Drive, mm -hmm. as you're heading, uh, if Cape Fear Valley is on your right and Bordeaux is on your left. Okay. All right, and you're going down Village Drive toward the library. Okay. All right. It would be the first light on your right. You turn right, and it's the first building on the left on Roxy Avenue. All right. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Because we may have a young person that may mm -hmm. not, you know, but yeah. might be interested in going. Mm -hmm. Right. And Absolutely. Getting that and we encourage that. We want that. Mm -hmm. okay. I would just add, if, if, this, if the young person is at school or if there's a parent, guardian, auntie, uncle, or whatever, you're watching this show and you have a student, if you can't get to Roxy Avenue, you know, you can reach out to that counselor, social worker, psychologist at that school. And they can also help link you to Roxy Avenue. They can also help link a, a family to other services that may be available in the community. So just if they're in the, if they're in the school setting um, and they're looking for someone, any of those folks would also know how to help them to connect with Roxy Avenue, with Alliance, um, any of the other service providers in the community as well. Good. Now, what about that young person who may feel like if I reach out, I'm going to be judged? Well, for, for us and for Doug as well, counselors, social workers, psychologists, we all work under a code of ethics and confidentiality, the rights of the client, that is number one priority for us because what we do is based on that helping relationship. Right. So if you can't trust that when you come and talk to me that I'm going to keep your information confidential, that I'm going to treat you with dignity, that I'm going to keep your integrity intact, you're not going to talk with me. Now, if your safety is a risk for all of us, if your safety or someone else's safety is a risk, we are not going to keep that information because we don't keep secrets of students. But outside of that, um, you know, when you come in, that information is going to be treated in a very privileged and very confidential way. If we have to share it with someone, it would be on a needs to know basis. So if a student came in, we are gonna contact a parent because that pa we're relying on that parent or that guardian to help get that student to Roxy Avenue. And we need that parent to give consent for services and to be there to provide that follow-up care and, and monitor that student. We're playing a support role, but that parent and that guardian, you know. Have to be a part of it. They have to be a part of it. And you also got to know that if a kid or a parent or coworker they come in and they tell you that, even though they're not, they're saying, don't tell anybody, well, that's a clear cry for help. Mm -hmm. And a lot when you're crying for help, it may not always be something that can happen in that office. You might have to reach out to some other folks in order to really provide the services that are needed for the student. Well, you know what, what we're going to do is take a really quick break giving us some really great information. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, maybe we can talk a little bit more about it's okay to ask. You kind of okay. hinted. So right. we want to get more into that, okay? Okay. All right, don't don't go anywhere. All okay. right. Stay right there. Okay. Yes, stay here. Right? I'm here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stick around for more Get Connected. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome, oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Gary, financial aid forms. 
Biology homework, G. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. That chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Getting that college education, what are you gonna do? Graduate and take some office job? Be like everybody else. Or will you dare do something different? Like be a teacher. You could be my teacher. You got the skills, the smarts. Yes, you. You could be the teacher I never forget. That would be cool. Does that corporate job even have recess? What are you gonna make of yourself? What are you gonna make of me? Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. We're discussing suicide prevention for our young people and we're getting all kinds of great information from Ms. Natasha Scott, who is Cumberland County Schools Executive Director of Student Services, and Mr. Douglas Parrish from the Cape Fear Valley Behavioral Health Care Center. A lot to chew in there, but <laughs> hey, it's all good, Doug, it's all good. But you know what, um, before we went to the break, mm -hmm. Natasha, you hinted toward a program Mm -hmm. It's okay to ask. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is It's Okay to Ask? Okay, It's Okay to Ask is a tagline created by the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. And it is meant as an informational tagline, like a marketing tool to get people to talk about suicide. It's a myth, it's taboo, and as we mentioned in the first sec segment, you could save someone's life by just asking. Just it asking. is okay to ask about suicide. It actually saves lives. It does not make someone suicidal. It saves lives. That's good. Now mm -hmm. this is something that, as you mentioned, our school system has adopted. Yes. You presented this to Dr. Till and our yes. board. Yes. What was the reception? The reception was, um, it was extremely positive. There was a lot of support. We are concerned about students as well as staff and our family members. And that's just a little thing to do, meaning to be aware of the signs and symptoms of suicide and to know when to go and get help. And so through some of that support, we've been allowed to proclaim a week in February as Suicide Prevention Week. That's gonna be February the 5th through the 11th. And February the 8th is Suicide Awareness Day. Okay. Now I'm really excited about Suicide Awareness Day. Okay. Let me tell you and why. why. I was going to say, and why are you excited about Suicide because Awareness Day? Because we've ordered these shirts. They are really beautiful. Um, they'll be in a variety of colors. Some are purple, some are gray, some are white. But they have the National Suicide Prevention Ribbon, which is purple and teal. So the national colors for suicide prevention are purple and teal. I hope that some of our viewers will wear a ribbon or wear those colors on February the 8th to show solidarity with Cumberland County Schools, show support of it is okay to ask about suicide. And so all we're really trying to do is just spark a conversation to help create an environment where we are kind to people and if you see some of the signs, that you know what the signs are and when you see someone struggling that you'll ask and help them get in the hands of a caring professional. That's good. Now throughout the week you have any specific activities planned? Yes. Um, one of the really big activities is that we're going to train all of our principals in safe talk training. Safe Talk is alertness training. It's for lay people. Anyone 15 years of age or older can participate in Safe Talk training. It just basically reviews the signs of sympt and symptoms of suicide, how to ask the question, and then how to go and get help. And so all of our principals will receive that training. We're also offering that training to central office staff as well. We have the Awareness Day. Like I said, everyone will wear the t-shirts. I hope that you'll see It's Okay to Ask on the school marquees so that as people are driving around, they're wondering, ask about what? Right. Ask us and we'll tell, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. We'll, you know, we'll give you as much information as, uh, as people want to hear about it. Some of the schools, some of the attendance areas are planning their own events, like in the Jack Britt District, they're planning a walk. Some of the others are um, discussing and planning some 
workshops kinds of things. So there'll be lots of individual things that'll happen at the school, but from the district office. When people, uh, one more thing, on the February the 8th, on the Awareness Day, mm -hmm. we're asking people to take selfies or ussies in their, oh, in their, I like that. I like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah to just, you know, take a picture, wearing the colors, doesn't matter if you have one of the shirts, wear the color, put on a ribbon, and to send those pictures to me at the central office, and me, and you, and Lori. <laughs> and we've discussed this, we have discussed this. And my here. assistant, Shirley Carter, we're gonna create a photo gallery and put some additional information up for parents so that when people visit our website, not only can they see all the support that there is within Cumberland County Schools, as well as the community at large, like Cape Fear Valley, like Alliance Behavioral Health, but they can also get some information about, it's okay to ask, but also, and who do you call after you ask? Right. So, really excited about that. You want to share your um, email address? Yes, my email address is Natasha Scott. It's my name, all one word, N-A-T-A-S-H-A-S-C-O-T-T -T mm -hmm. at ccs.k12.nc.us. All right, so mm -hmm. that's for selfies and ussies. Selfies and ussies. In purple and teal, or Pur teal. Purple, yeah. Um, and also, too, there's, um, if you email me, I'll send the little sign. I want them to hold the sign that says, it's okay to ask. And it has the logo from the State Department office. Just hold the sign, take your little selfie, and send the photos. Tell me what agency you're with, or if you're a parent, if you're a grandmother, auntie, uncle. It's okay. We're just looking for all the support. You know, what? I just thought it might wonder if it would be a good idea to have a template of the sign and you put it on the website that people, people can, just, can print it down. Yes, I would that love way, that. Yeah, and then they can, oops, I guess I need to ask Lori. <laughs> We're doling out work up here. I know. I know. I was Ooh, going to scandalous. A, yes. Okay. Well, anyway, moving right along. Um, I understand that the two of you took It's Okay to Ask on the road mm -hmm. to the state and you shared it. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the reception there? It was really fantastic. In fact, I was surprised. We had, uh, we had been allotted four hours to do a presentation to counselors, psychologists, and social workers from school systems all over the state of North Carolina. And I was concerned about that four hours. I thought, man, are we going to be able to fill this four hours? Well, it turned out people were so engaged and involved, had lots of questions. Mm -hmm. And we were surprised at how many of these people felt similar about not asking that they were a little bit afraid to ask. We took a survey of the mm -hmm. attendees before, and then we did a survey after our presentation, and it completely reversed that. Mm -hmm. People yeah. said that they felt much more comfortable after we had had this conversation, but they asked lots of questions. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how many people were there, but it was 120 maybe. I don't know if it was that many, but it was a lot of people. There were I a can't lot remember, of people. The room but it was, was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. We received some emails from other school districts inquiring about um, part of what we shared with them is that we adopted the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale. Okay, as that our, was, I was going to ask you about that next. Okay. So part of what we were sharing with them is Cumberland County Schools, along with Cape Fear Valley Hospital, we adopted that rating scale in order to do, as our standard tool for assessing mm -hmm. for suicide, ideation, and behavior. And so part of what we were sharing with them was the process for how we went about doing that, but then we also showed them, here's how you administer the actual scale. And so we've received some contacts from districts wanting more information, um, the forms and that kind of stuff. So it really was a great reception. We also shared a lot of information about how Cape Fear Valley and the school system collaborated mm -hmm. and how we brought that out to the school and how we joined so that now if, if somebody at the school system yes. does that scale mm -hmm. and they want to send that child, say, to the emergency room or to the Roxy Center, mm -hmm. If they send the scale along with them, we know exactly what to do because we're doing the exact same thing. That's mm -hmm. great. So we're using the same instrument they're That's using, right. they're using what we're using. Mm -hmm. We're all talking the same language mm -hmm. and we're getting the same results. Now that's collaboration. And we trained all 250 of our student services staff, counselors, social workers, and psychologists. Mm -hmm. My staff, along with Doug, every time we did the training, Cape Fear Valley was there, right there with us, mm -hmm. front and center, training all of the staff. Um, we're able to call them to consult. Um, and sometimes when I know that a family is headed to Roxy Avenue, right. I'm able to send a quick text to Doug to say, hey, you know, we've, we've got one of our students coming so that they can just 
give them a little extra TLC, hug. Yeah. Little, yeah, and we make sure nice that we're there to receive them so that they know you were talking about them feeling judged or things like that. Mm -hmm. We want them to know that we're there to help them. We're not there to mm -hmm. judge them or to make mm -hmm. them feel bad. We really want to help them. And so we make sure that we're there waiting for them. Mm -hmm. When we get alerted that they're coming, mm -hmm. we make sure that we're ready. So the partnership, the relationship has been great. He keeps trying to retire on me. <laughs> yeah, I heard you were retiring. March 31st. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go. Man, we need you. I mean, really, like, what am I going to do without my work buddy? <laughs> well, I'll still be in the community. I'm still available. And you know what? Speaking of the word community, how does this collaboration, how does what you all are doing, how, does, how is this impacting our community? Well, for us, one of the things as school employees, there's a tendency if someone comes in and they say they're suicidal, you want to just automatically send them to the emergency room. And so when you have a standardized tool like the CSSRS, which is evidence-based, it's based on research, short-time administration, it makes it a little easier to know when someone needs to go to the emergency room versus when someone needs to be referred for outpatient counseling. So that in itself saves parents a great amount of time and money of sitting in the emergency department, just like Doug explained. And then I'll ask Doug if you'll share, like with the CIT officers and all of the other groups that sure. you all train, which allows us all to speak the same language because we're using the same tool and we're all assessed in the same way. Yeah, at Kafer Valley, we have decided that we need to reach out to the entire community about this. So we've begun training law enforcement on the use of the Columbia Suicide Severity Rating Scale, the faith-based community. We're reaching out to anyone who is interested in this, EMT, EMS. We're training those folks as well. So we're reaching out to everyone. At Kafer Valley, everybody is important to us. So we want to make sure that everybody gets this. You know what? I've been told that we are short on time, but I want to just find out any last words you all have to share with our um, viewers regarding such a serious topic. Two words. We've had so much to say and we haven't told you yet. Who to, we gave you some information about who to call, but we're going to show on the screen some additional numbers that folks can call for more information. And the second is, it's okay to ask. Be kind to people because you never know what they're going through. And so just, it's okay to ask. If it's a coworker, family member, colleague, pay attention and ask the right questions. And the last thing I would say is probably if someone wants to know how to start the conversation, how do you start it? Start by saying, have you ever wished you were dead or wished you could go to sleep and not wake up? Mm -hmm. And that's how you start the conversation. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. This has really been very enlightening. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.